Yeah, what's going on, guys out in Revolution uh, land? I'm here with two of my favorite people, uh, George Bamford, uh, who everyone knows is a visionary in the watch world, who basically kind of created a whole new aesthetic in watches, uh, blacked out watches with kind of beautiful, vibrant colors, uh, in particular his Bamford Blue, but has really become the premier customizer. I would say, you know, the AMG for Mercedes of, of watches. Um, <laughs> and, 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 or, you know, even a bit of a, this kind of Singer Porsche Porsches. And then uh, my other buddy, Andrew McCutcheon, uh, the guy who found Time and Tide, the dominant voice of watches and coolness in Australia. Incidentally, also an amazing humanitarian. He was the very first person who demonstrated that we as watch journalists could have a voice and also some possibility to raise money uh, in deference to charity. And, and when you guys, I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, it wasn't too long ago, there was these forest fires that were raging through, um, through, through Australia, I'm sorry, bushfires that were raging through Australia. And he created an initiative that raised a ton of money for that. And he was the first person to realize that, you know, it's not enough that we just, you know, do a good business and we make money, but we have to, we have to make a little bit of a give back to society. So Andrew, how are you, sir? George, how are you, sir? I'm really well. What an intro, George. How do we even respond to that? I know. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Well, bo I mean, I, both of you really <laughs> have uh, moved the boundary. I mean, you know, where you said about giving back. I mean, both of you with your charity, what you've done, you know, really is absolutely amazing. Um, and for me, you know, I'm humbled to be on the same stage as you today um, to, uh, to just kind of see two great friends. Um, you know, uh, Andrew, I'm normally talking to you and you've got a, you've got a glass <laughs> of in your hands and weigh probably exactly the same. But it, you yeah. kind of both seem a little bit more sensible today, but, it, um, but it's you know, time zones, uh, whatever the time zone is. But I would say to you is this kind of duality of two time zones. Um, I think what has happened is all of this has brought everyone together and, you know, to see um, as a global space, we are, we are together. And that was, that's so great. You know, Australia, I mean, like literally if I was stamping here, you know, the myth is that Australia is the other, other side of the earth. And, and, uh, and, that, and, you know, today I don't feel like that. And that's the great thing. And same with Singapore, you know, we, we're, we're together and, and that's the great thing. I think that's what uh, this digital universe has brought us. Can, I, I need to make a point on that because I've spoken to way more this year than all the other years combined, yeah. times 10. And George, I wrote to you a ton of times on Instagram from 2014 and you never replied. So 2020 was what it took to get us together. Let's just, let, let's call that out, baby. I'm so, I'm so happy that we're friends now. It took, it took, you were a, you're a hard man to get, I gotta tell you that. He, he, he is a very hard <laughs> man to get. He is, he is, he is, he is. You know, but I, I would say that one of the kind of takeaways of this year is that um, I think that the, the, it's brought people with the same sensibility, with the same ethics, with the same kind of like regard uh, to life um, together in a very in a very big way. Right. You know, and, you know, one of the things that I really respect about George was, you know, when when the shutdown started to happen throughout the world, like uh, around uh, March, uh, he was one of the first guys to start like creating content to make people feel uplifted. Right. You know, he, he would he had to that whole George asks kind of thing and, and, and it was so engaging and so fun and 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 it just you know it may give you something in a day where basically you went primarily from exercise straight to drinking something <laughs> something that made you feel like super uplifted and connected with with, with the world and 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 and, uh, and george you know i gotta really thank you for that and so one of the things i wanted to talk about today was in addition to how awesome both you guys are is that there you, you guys forged a very sort of natural collaboration and I think it comes out of, of two guys who, you know, as I said, George, with what you did today, uh, I'm sorry, this year, in, in terms of uplifting everyone, and Andrew, what you did uh, last year uh, with the um, the bushfire option, two guys. Do you know the way that, that was that was this year? That's how was, weird this year. That was in January, man. We're in the same year. Yeah. Yes, you're right. That's crazy. Oh my and we God. thought that was a crisis. We yes. thought that was a crisis. 2020 yeah. had other plans, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so what I love the fact that you guys, you know, kind of developed a friendship and that has born a collaboration. So maybe Andrew, tell us a little bit about that. Well, yeah, it, it did. I'm not going to lie. George is, is a hard man to befriend. And I think, you know, fittingly in his bat cave there, dressed in black, like his modded out Daytonas of yore, um, 
this was something that I was very intent on forging, which was a friendship with George. Well, at the very least, a reply was what I was after in the first place. And what it took actually was um, the notion that we would install a Time and Tide editor in, in London. And when Mike Christensen, who's a, a great editor, ex uh, GQ Australia editor, moved back to his ancestral home, uh, we put out feelers. I, I just thought he could go and meet the coolest people in London. And, and I set another target on your head, George. I put another crosshair on there. I'm like, I can't, I can't pull down this white rhino. I want you to try. And George and, and Mike hit it off. And, and that's where we started. It was a, and then of course, when we have our first meeting, George, you want to recount that one for the, for the people, because you, you just suddenly had all this information about time and tide and you, you actually knew me. And I was so flattered by that. I couldn't believe it. You know, <laughs> Okay, look, I, 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 it's probably because it wasn't Time and Tide that you were talking to me from, and that was the biggest problem is. So I, I sound like such a dickhead that I didn't kind of connect to you and kind of like go, <laughs> oh yes, no, it, you know, I respond to most of the things on social media, so it's probably just me <laughs> being an odd person, but I, I, I've, look, I love time. I've, I've moved on, George. I've moved on. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I, th I think, you know, sometimes we have to put things in evil boxes and leave them there. But what I would <laughs> say to you is um, you've got to imagine that I absolutely love how Time and Tide and Revolution and The Rake, all of you guys have really kind of moved the, moved the compass on how journalism is. And that is the great thing. And you know, what Time and Tide have done, you know, and I can even put Hodinkee into this as well. You think of all of you guys together have really gone and said, okay, we're putting our money where our mouth is. We put, we, we back into these watches that we love. We, we're the ones that say, actually, we like this watch. This is what we're doing. And that is the great thing. And that's always the thing that I'm kind of respecting is you've, you've now become a voice for the watch community, but you've also said, actually, if you want it, we're going to do some damn cool shit out of this and everyone's going to go, oh my God, I love that. You know, and you look at what's being delivered, you know, time and tide, your straps, they're just unreal. Your club that you've done. I'm like, it's just like one of the most amazing things. And then wait, <laughs> you know, you've knocked it out of the park each time. Like that Hoyer, the dreamer, the, the, um, Laura and Ferrier, the, the, you know, literally, can I just drop every, everything on, on this whole place and just go, whatever whatever you're doing you're you're blasting it out of the park and that is the great thing is you think on every side of this we are in such a good place of kind of like from the from your voice to where you are today and totally. and yes i am a dick yeah i'm i should have should have uh, should have kind of uh, uh, put up that actually i i've got a card that says it if i if i was everyone's cup of tea i'd be a mug and <laughs> That's that's my uh, my. Manager. Can I can I give give the viewers a little bit of an insight to what it's like to connect with George on Zoom because it's it, it's a thrill a minute guys like. I have got it in my car got... too because this is my other office. <laughs> he's like what's his name Ari Gold the guy from Entourage who's got he's yes. got that guy Lloyd that he's constantly shouting at so let me just give you set the scene so George sits here and fifteen every fifteen seconds in an apoplectic sort of rage he'll just shout Lloyd and then there's this assistant. <laughs> just out of shot who gives him whatever he needs in that moment and then he has these cards he just yeah, yes. pops them up like in the middle of a call <laughs> you'll be deep in the detail of of something to do with the watch and then you'll just put up a card that says shut the fuck up or yeah. you're a fucking rock star or yes. what's the other one it's about it can be time. done and <laughs> exactly yeah. i've got or, some new ones no, bits don't okay. kill my vibe whenever the nut when the money comes up he's just like bang don't kill yeah. the vibe. Don't let's not okay. talk about money. <laughs> so I kind of want to continue with what George had mentioned earlier a little bit about how a lot of us are kind of making turning the corner to be from sort of pure editorial players to creating limited editions. And I know we're here to basically talk about the first limited edition that you're doing, Andrew. And I know it's going to be a platform for you for the future. Um, and it was interesting because uh, one of the questions that people sometimes ask me is like, dude, what about your editorial credibility? And I'm like, well, to me, if I'm doing a, a watch with a brand that I'm making and I tell you it's dope, right? And, and, and I would buy it myself, then I basically put my fucking testicles on the line there because 
if you buy that watch and you're like, you know what, Waco, you're a fucking asshole. I bought your watch and it sucks fucking balls. It is <laughs> horrible. And it's like its retail value has plummeted. It's it's just a <laughs> shit. I fucking hate you. Then, you know, then I my that credibility is gone, right? But in general, or I would say we're we've been fortunate enough that the the projects that we've done are watches that I genuinely love. And I wouldn't put it out there if I didn't really love it. And I and to me, so it's like I tell you the story about this brand, I tell you the story about a design. And I tell you, and I offer you this watch to, to, to purchase, which incidentally, I always try to make the same price or pretty close to the same price as a normal production piece. And I want everyone who's bought that the next day, instead of saying like, Waco, your dick to be like, dude, that was a great watch. I'm so happy I bought that. And in a lot of the cases with the Dark Star or the Blue Dream or even the Hard Heart, which we launched recently, these things are being floated around the secondary market for like double the price, right? You know, and that's not the objective, but the point is that's my credibility is I've made a dope watch in collaboration with amazing brands. And I think that's a super important thing to say because like when journalists ask me that, I'm like, really? Well, what takes more credibility for you to accept a junket with a brand that you kind of really don't respect that much? And now they've flown you business class to some part of the world where you're living in a hotel, you're staying in a hotel room that you can't afford on your own dime and you're eating meals <laughs> that you can't, would never book on your own dime. And then all of a sudden you're like, I love your watch. That's bullshit, bro. So for me, the <laughs> more I, I only do limited editions with brands that I love and I would genuinely buy. Would you agree? I couldn't agree more. And, and the thing about that notion of it being somehow uh, corrupt or, or um, you know, just the usual sellout throwdown that everyone has for watch journalism is that this is the moment where you and I way reach into our pocket and risk our business. And George, yeah. by the way, I'm risking my business for you, baby. Uh, no, we, we are, we are genuinely committing. And the thing <laughs> is, if you, if you want to talk about pure expression, this is the moment where we get to channel our ideas, where we get to, we actually get to show whether we know our shit at all. If you were actually a sellout way who was in the brand's pocket, you think you'd know how to do it. You think you'd know how to pick out the cover girl from a million other alternatives. You think you'd know how to, how to, how to pick out that particular um, pip of red on the hand heart that made all the difference. Like this is the way it's pure expression. It's, it's pure passion and it's fear. Like I'm sitting here, I'm not going to lie to you guys. The reason I'm not drinking George is I'm already so excited because it's only a matter of days until this watch comes out. It's our first, I'm, I feel very nervous. I've never felt more connected to a, to a watch, to the decisions behind a watch. Oh, there it is. Oh my God, I, I, know, I haven't I, even seen that. Honestly, this is like just that. the box. I know, so I'm, look, anyway, I'm rambling, but I, I couldn't agree more way in the sense that this is the, the most real and the most kind of cliff edge feeling you have as a journalist, because instead of just sitting here and saying, I thereby decree that this watch is seven out of 10. I decree yes. that this is, a, you know, you're, you're actually saying, you know what? Here's tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm backing this one in. And that's, if you want to know what a journalist really feels and believes, then look at their limited editions. If they're cynical and, and aimed at and making money, I don't reckon they're doing very well. So yeah, they never do. Yeah. All right, guys. So, wait, wait, wait. one thing I will say, way you know, you've got to imagine when my friends are wearing your watches and going, "Have you seen this?" Now that friends, clients, and and that's the great thing. That for me is the telltale sign that you know you've done these are people that aren't even watch nuts that are buying these watches and going you know like the dreamer like like the new bulgari i mean that was like a boom knockout blow and i was a, a friend of mine came uh, sorry a friend of mine uh, came over last night because we we're allowed to see people of course um a friend of mine came over last night and was wearing <laughs> that watch and he was just like have you seen this watch it's so damn fucking cool and i was like I know that watch. I know where it comes from. I know who, who did it. And he goes, yeah, 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 no, I found this and someone got it for me. And, but, and I, was also, I was like, I could have helped you with that, man. I, I literally could have helped you. I could have, I didn't know you were into those watches. And it was just like, it, that was just a cool thing. It was just like, I didn't even it know. It just occurred to me. Watches. That's awesome. With that exact model, that would be the ultimate watch for, yeah. you know, a pickup, right? Yeah. There you go. Say, I, I gave him that. Looks, you, that's sick. <laughs> but it'd be like you think, because it like the ultimate trick with that watch is to say, "Oh, you mean this one?" And then let's see it with the lights off. Like, yes. yeah. it's, you know, one 
Yes. One thing leads to another. Because I bet yeah. he did that, George. I bet he oh. said, look at this. No, 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 that, that, no, no, definitely. He said, he said, you're the only one that would have a UV light. And I was like, <laughs> of course I've got a fucking UV light. I, I'm not, I, don't, I haven't got it on my desk, but of course I've got to have that big fuck off UV torch that like literally uh, makes everything into a nightclub. It's just amazing. <laughs> okay, now I guys, we're here to talk about the Bamford and Time and Tide edition. So without further ado, gentlemen, um, Andrew, why don't you, you start it off? Tell us a little bit about what we're about to see. And then George, you know, you, you take it from there afterwards. Go for it, buddy. It's really simple. We are looking at a marriage of, of two brands in as close to a um, and, and totally equal way as possible. You know, we have uh, the way that our two colors, the Time and Tide Club has this really nice kind of burnt orange uh, tone to it. And of course that, that Bamford blue that excites me so much um, coming together in a way that is meaningful because it's a GMT. So at any given time, my watch is going to be set to George's time and hopefully George's will be set to mine. You know, it's kind of this, this notion of two ends of the world coming together in a watch and, and a really equal meeting place for, look, I, I don't want to say for two brand, two great brands. I just want to say, I'm really happy to be there with you, George. It's, it feels kind of special actually, you know, instead of it just being a logo on a, on a watch, we've really made this to me, I think quite a, a, a an equal clash of personalities. <laughs> no, I, I, I would, I would totally agree. I look, I love, I, I love this watch. Uh, Andrew, I love what you did. You kind of pushed us to do some little hidden secrets, little few things that, you know, are kind of not the norm, even your logo. Um, you know, if you're a club member, there's a certain thing. And then if they're not, you know, there's just just some things that if you know, it's like almost like it's that little salute. You know, it's a, it's yeah. um, there's a little bit of a bull. There's a bit of a Bulgari revolution trick, actually, way. So if you go to the or assume it, if you go to the the loom shot, um, what we have is what appears to be just the time and tide logo on the dial. Yeah. But when you flick when you flick the lights off, nice. a, lo a loom shield appears oh, around I love that, <laughs> and that is our club logo and look the club is a is a it's it's a concept of small beats big these days like you only need a thousand true fans as a business and and uh george why don't you tell us a little bit about the <laughs> about the, the different aesthetic codes i see you guys have done like is that a steel dlc kind of case going on yeah so it's a dark gray case uh it's our gmt so it's it's the um dual time uh, GMT with a Salita SW330 movement. Um, this is a, the one, uh, a dash one movement. Um, and it really is a, a Kedora strap. Um, and it comes with two straps. It, uh, for oh, me, nice. this is uh, internal rotating bezel. Um, I am sounding like a salesman. I am definitely not the salesman for this. I love this watch. This was okay. really, we, this, this all happened on Zoom teams and probably every other kind of even <laughs> FaceTime, um, butt calling, sorry, butt dialing. Um, <laughs> and like whatever else we could do. We it was a proper booty watch. call. Um, and that was the great thing is, and you, Andrew, you were totally right. Two time zones. If you imagine it was always like I was phoning you in the morning and you're in the evening closing down your day. And that was the great thing about this was it really was the morning and night, the night and morning. And that was, you know, just the play of the end of the day, the beginning of the day. And that was, we, we said, it has to be a dual time. It has to be the two time zones. Nice. Um, and, and the GMT really for me was that whole thing. And, and that's why even the shield, you know, during the day it looks black, um, but then at night when it pops out and it's just that, ref it's a reverse. We just couldn't have thought, well, that was a total nod to, to the members. And, you know, it's, it's, it is, it's a limited edition. It's a small limited edition. Now, when we say limited edition, you know, we were constantly saying, you know, limited editions sometimes annoy the hell out of me because I miss out on them. And, right. you know, and, and it annoys, it, it annoys Andrew. It annoys me. Sometimes it annoys you, you know, like every time that you, where you've launched something, I've either fallen down the stairs or 
or I've been WhatsApping you non-stop to try and get it. And you're like, yeah, talk to this person. Or, hey, this oh, is the link. Go on to okay. this. And I'm like, but that is what, you know, and it's amazing about the limited edition. But this, this is, Andrew's done something totally kind of on its head on this. There's a club members edition, but there's something else as well. So it really is. It's just, it's something new. And, you know, the case is great. The watch is great. It yeah. feels great on the wrist. Um, yes. And with that Kedora strap. And it's a quick release strap as well. So, you know, what I, I really love is the whole idea of watches as we move forward becoming kind of community symbols. I guess they kind of are to some extent as well already. You know, I think like one of the reasons why we shy mill is so successful is for a certain type of dude, he kind of wants to hang out with other guys, uh, other guys that wear that, that watch. Right. Um, but I also like the idea that if, even if it's a, it's a society or a community that people may not be aware of, when you see another guy with that watch, like if I, you know, with that time side watch on, um, you're like, hey, what's up, dude? How are you? You know, and you walk over and have a chat and, you know, they have the same values and they're probably like, you know, they're very knowledgeable, but they're also a chill guy as well. And, and it's almost like a, like, you know, a membership badge, right? Like uh, that's kind of, you know, is that, well, is wait, that yeah, yeah. wait, it's like at the moment and I'm, I'm, I'm I kind of just clocked it earlier. You've got a Gerald Gento IWC on. I do. The engineer. Well done, now, for me, I love that dial. I love the watch. I love that it, it, it harks back to the Gerald Gento. It's the old story that, you know, you and I could reminisce. When I, if I saw that on your wrist, you know, same with you, Andrew, you'd, you'd look at his wrist and you go, boom, I know exactly that. I know this, boom, boom, boom. It's IWC. It's the unsung hero of, of that designs of Gerald Gento. Really, it's the gangster move of a watch because it's gold, it's boom, 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 boom. But it is that Gerald Genta design. Um, oh my freaking God. And I know that watch. I know where it's come from as well. Oh, wow. I love that watch. So with the uh, Omani uh, crest on it. Yeah. That's, that's rare as like literally, like that's, that's, that's like rocking horse shit in, in the middle of kind of like somewhere else in the somewhere else i mean like that is awesome. <laughs> no but what you've just said about a club you've just said about the connection of a club if i if i was if i never knew you and i sat next to you on a oh thank good if i could ever get on a plane again um if if you know if i sat next to you on a plane i'd be clocking your watch for most of the time and then i'd, I'd ask you a question about it and i think that's the same with this time and tide there is so many different details on it that you'll know it's a time and tide watch. Oh, and that yeah. is the great thing about it. And you will sit next to someone that is wearing the time and tide watch and you'll go, boom, time and tide. And then you'll know that they're a watch person. You'll, you, you'll have a great flight because you're chatting to someone or you'll be like, oh, I don't want to know that person ever again. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, how many of these are you yes. making? So the club version, which is what we're looking at, oh, there's one other detail uh, that, that's it, that I think really, it probably points to the equality in our relationship, George. I, I, we got a rule that date wheel. So yes. it alternates between a time of tide day and a George day. So right. you can decide which, which works better for you. You can decide which, which days fall your way. But we really, I genuinely wanted this to be 50-50, but there's going, there's going to be 50 uh, club watches. And then the, the regular version, which is probably, if we, if we just flick to that one, it's probably a more mainstream and <laughs> it's just fucking time. The feelings are mutual, George. Um, yeah, so th then the other model is going to be unlimited. Just okay. so that, but it's, it's going to be produced for one year. So, right. you know, oh, if you discover this watch halfway through the year, look, we, I don't know, this is a bit of a nod to the people that have, have been burnt or just felt a bit disenchanted by the pre-sellout limited edition that never existed, you know, or there's, there's a, I feel like this is a time of, there's a bit of cynicism creeping into, to all of these mechanics behind releases. And I love George that. And I just, yeah, it's just, it's there. <laughs> it's there for you whenever you want it, as long as you buy it in, in, in the next 12 months. Um, you know, this, there is, it has to be a limited nature to it in some way. It's not just there forever, but it, it's a mark in time. It's kind of the, yeah. it's, it's the, the watch that, everyone that survived 2020 can wear as a badge. It's there for one year. Yeah, I love that. You know, that's one of the things that I really dug about the, the 50th anniversary Silver Snoopy, right? So like, I mean, we all saw that watch and we're like, dude, that's insane, right? And you know, on some level, initially I was like surprised when it wasn't a limited edition, you know, and then I had my interview with Randall and he's like, listen, 
you know, everyone's always talking about how pissed off they are. They can't get to watch. And unless you've got some relationship with the guy at the boutique or, or you know, some incredible relationship with your retailer, it's just not going to be possible for you. And then you have to go into the secondary market and pay double or, or three times the price, especially something with a silver Snoopy on it. They said, look, we want to make it over a certain period of time. And then, of course, we'll stop. But we want to make it, you know, and of course, it, it'll never be like an easy watch to acquire, but we want to make it so that if you're ultimately the guy that wants it, you're willing to wait, you'll get it eventually, you know? And I think that's that's super nice. Um, but I like that also, that it's like, hey, this is dope um, and you can get it, right? Like, you know, you might have to wait a little bit, but it's not going to be totally impossible for you, right? So would I say, would it, would it be yeah. safe to say that the 50 watches are already pre-sold or, or kind of? No. Okay. Okay. And, uh, no, and what's the price? 100% not. What, what's the price? Of George, the <laughs> whenever I talk about money with George and numbers, he's just, he starts sticking the cards up and I never, I actually have no <laughs> idea what it's going to cost George. That, that, that's he the just said a cut. That's a conversation. He said a cut. Be- <laughs> yeah, yes, no, that's another one. Honestly, I'm sure. you and someone else have dealt with the price. I, 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 I just, I, I just put cards up thing. and just say fucking yeah, eight. He does. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so it's a. I think it's fourteen hundred pounds. Is is the is, is the answer? It, if I recall, it just George has said it can't be more than Snoopy. <laughs> can't be more than Snoopy. We, oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. so Snoopy remains the most expensive GMT, and I think we're right. probably number two. But no, it, it comes with a, um, a, a bracelet as well as a strap. Yeah. The fun stuff, George. We haven't even talked about the really fun stuff, which was. Have you ever got rolling with George Way, where, where he starts being George Bamford in front of your eyes? That is just. The, have you ever had that? Uh, George I'm Bamford, sure. have I changed? Yeah, I think no, I no. Like... I, I want to give people an. <laughs> I want to give people an insight. What is, when when George starts rolling, so we're in like meeting three, and and as he described, he's having like his fourth coffee, and I'm I'm having my fourth brownie. Green tea. And it's Green getting tea. late. It's getting it's getting later and later, and and he's like, you know what? We need stickers. And I was like, what, what What? do you mean? What stickers? He's like, like old trunk stickers, like on an old LV. He's like, this is all about travel. It's about it's about Melbourne to London. It's about Transocean. It's, and then he starts like finding all these old vintage um, sticker designs. So this this watch is quite amazing. It comes with um, a, new, a totally redesigned box. It comes with two straps. And it comes with all these crazy trunk stickers that, that oh, George cool. just ideated and he's stuck in there you can put them on a surfboard or a skateboard uh, you know we had the idea that george was going to randomly put them on all the, all the boxes <laughs> yeah. so we had so much fun didn't we george it was just it was way too much fun to feel like work no but you know what i loved is you gave me free reign and my my team you know i, I we always kind of think oh I mean, you know if someone says thinks it's me it's it's a team behind me that actually understands where we're going what we're doing and saying Let's knock it out of the park. And what I'd say is this, when when with the trunk stickers, it was just like, you know, we kept on talking about travel. We kept on talking about, you know, I was talking about my bucket list because, you know, yeah. way, you know, when you and I first did some interviews and I said, the thing I'm missing at the moment is hugging people. The yeah. thing I'm missing at the moment is actually having the random conversation with someone and getting information in a different way. And that, that for me is, and my bucket list is going to Singapore, going to Australia. I want to go and surf in Australia because why not? And, and the thing is, I want to kind of just get stickers, get things that just, you know, I come back and I put on my Ramoa and I'm just like, this is, this is me traveling. And that's the thing that I'm, I'm like, I'm missing kind of, you know, I'm forgetting my travel kit. You know, I've got a little kind of bags of travel kit. And it's in a drawer just behind me. And I'm like going, the fuck is, you know, I, I want to be out there doing this. And Absolutely. I love stickers. I, you know, I really do love stickers. And I just think they make you smile. You, you also kind of reconnect us with the beauty of a GMT watch, which is about a watch about kind of like uh, for people that are constantly on the go, in which all three of us. Were That's the to- irony in the most you know? lockdown year ever, where we were just dreaming of travel. And, and actually it was. You know, it's tantalizing speaking to someone on the other side of the world, and and yeah, you know, like you said, it was it was always a it was all a, a call I look forward to. And and George, I have to say, when you're rolling with George in a conceptual um, partnership sense, he also just sends you these tantalizing, and you must be getting these all the time. Way I've had an insight into how limited editions happen. If you're with a good partner, 
they're just yeah. they're gonna tease you. They're gonna tease the hell out of you the whole way. So George is sending me, and there's there's there's, there's an image there for you soon. But he's sending me pictures of dials. He's like, these dials are amazing. I'm like, I haven't. That is just that's like taking off taking off one you know pantyhose or something. I don't know, whatever. I was just like, don't don't stop there. Don't stop at the dial. You know, he was. But you know, a fun process. But Andrew, the the great thing is that everything is connected in my office. So when I go upstairs, I can see the dials, you know, I can go and see the team. So that's the great thing is that in one building in the heart of Mayfair, I can go and see it being made. So when I'm saying, sending you um, the image of the dials and hopefully we can share the image of the dials because it would be just, it, just so then you can see I'm not kind of teasing. I'm 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 as as excited <laughs> as you. I'm like I'm like a kid in a candy store. I mean, yeah, like literally, yeah. when whenever I get anything, when I, you know, it's it's like um, I know it sounds really strange. It's it's like um, recently I got given something for the first ever time because they said, "Oh, I really like your Instagram," you know, and here's a nice little present for you. I was like, "This is the coolest shit I've ever come across because someone's <laughs> given me something." I was like, this yeah. is awesome. And I'm exactly the same <laughs> with the watches. I'm like, I want this watch. This is damn cool. And that's why I sent you the image. Um, and uh, it would be cool to share it, uh, hopefully. Yeah, here. That's amazing. So this is, so dear viewer and dear way, when, whenever you do a watch with George, you're going to get these shots along the way. And, and frankly, it's just, it, it is, I, I, I'm peaking right now. Like, I don't think I've ever been this excited in a Zoom call because of, you know, I'm, I'm remembering the journey, but I'm also still on it because we haven't released it yet. Like this is hopefully going to launch when the when the watch launches, so you, you all can see more. But um, it date? was super fun. Launch date is Friday, the whatever eighth, eleventh next Friday. Uh, yeah, nice, so man. hopefully this is launching on today, Friday, eleventh of December, and it's a day where I'm going to see the club members for the first time in in a year. So oh, they're, awesome. we're all converging on. You've got a cool HQ there. Our, our HQ is. Uh, We've got this. We're in a big, big old uh, motorcycle oh, shop that we've, we've converted into a uh, into an office here. Um, I don't know if you can see much of that. So yeah, we've. Hey, Where uh, and I've got to come there. We've got to come and, and kind of we're drink loads of Negronis. On. We'll come and ride with Love you. Is. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. ride straight so, in. So what? Okay, I've got the perfect gin. Wait a minute. So this is this is the gin we'll drink when we come, which is called Four Pillars. It's one best oh, gym in the world two years in a row. Is this? That's awesome. And look at that. That's this looks like one of your sleeve tats, way. That totally does. This is awesome, yeah. This is made with a. We got. We got to get on. Made with a Japanese distillery. So this is one of their special editions. But and they're one of our partners in the business. They actually, they, they've been super supportive of Time and Tide. They see a great synergy between craft gin and and, and yeah. amazing watches. So you're absolutely welcome here and. You know, I've stayed in the back cave to give you a bit of a sense of uh, my home. Apart from whenever I talk to George, I'm in my converted pool shed, which is 2.5 meters by 1.5 meters. So I'm sort of speaking to him in this little coffin. But you know, today's a big day, George. I, I, I thought I looked good, especially when you've got a drink in your hand. I'm like going, yeah. I'm starting my day, man, and you're and you're just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm good. And and then it's just like the day gets even better. And it's, when it's the same with you. It's just like, hey. I'm, I'm, I want to know about the workout routines because, uh, you know, like, like oh, and I, I say that 2020 <laughs> has been a very interesting year because you learn a lot about other people. And, like, Andrew's got some insane-ass um, workout routine. George, so do you. Like, so every time I see you, George, you're out running or biking. And every time I see Andrew, he's doing some insane, like, military. I got my kids on my back. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So no, but my, my routine is basically just surviving having three three toddlers under seven and, and the way that whenever you're doing any activity that they're, they're, they're literally you feel like sort of like primordial man coming out of the swamp with all these things attached to you it's quite uh it's fun isn't it george you know how it is it's 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 <laughs> very cool um yeah no um where you were asking fitness i don't know this morning was really nice actually i'll tell you this morning was so wonderful i went for a run this morning I'm in London and I literally got up and my very, very strangely, because my mind sometimes doesn't sleep. Um, I was up really early this morning. I was up at 4.30 and I went for a run and it was just the nicest, like cold, it's fucking freezing here. Um, <laughs> and it is so nice because 
it just felt fresh. It just felt so, and it just, you, I felt alive and I came back at home and it was an hour's run. And I came back home and I was, I was like, this is just so, I, I, and you know, I, I've been on my computer and it's been so nice to kind of actually get stuff done in the morning. You know, so, so I, I would say that when I look at, at the watch you guys have created, um, it, what it fills me with is, is a sense of optimism. Like, and I, I would like to call it as, as this is maybe, let's call this as almost the first watch of 2021, all right? And, and talk about this watch being, you know, kind of a symbol <laughs> of, of the, the happiness and reconnection and, and, uh, and, and hope that we all have for the next year, which we all know is going to be awesome, right? Uh, and I think that if you have this watch, you're, you're kind of connected to that. Um, and I, and I have to say, again, you know, it's, it's an important watch for me also because it's created by two of my favorite dudes and, and people who are incredibly Thanks, sincere, super authentic. So congratulations, guys. Um, wishing you all the best on, on, the, on the watch uh, and anything we can do to help. Of course, we're here. And, uh, and yeah, for anyone that's watching this, it's like, you know, what Andrew was saying earlier is that he's basically, you know, bet, his, bet a fairly substantial amount of money to build all these watches. Um, and that's kind of putting his money where his mouth is. It's very easy for a journalist to say, I like this or I like that or I like that, because, you know, that brand who made that watch gave him a, a trip to an Ibiza or to Capri, you know. Um, but it's another thing to take your own hard earned money and the money that is basically, you know, necessary for you to run your business and invest it in a watch because you want to create something beautiful and you want to create something that people wear and it makes them feel better about life, um, that gives them some, you know, hope. Uh, and just as a fucking dope watch, because it was designed by this insanely cool motherfucker named George Bamford. So, uh, there you go. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. And uh, as the card says, you guys rock. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Wayne. Thanks, George. Love you, boys. Love you. Bye.